Hi there, good afternoon everybody and welcome back to PST Live. Now I know yesterday when you guys were with Melanie, Melanie talked about your writing activity, your writing homework for this week. And it's all based upon superlative stories. But today we're gonna be starting with something a little bit different. We're gonna be starting with some listening first. And then we're gonna be getting into some reading actually. And hopefully in our third class today, we will be having somewhat of a discussion. Anyhow guys, so our first one today, if you guys have access to your materials, please try to find the one that starts with topic, pollution is the world's biggest killer, right? So now before we get into this, um, we can see what our topic is here, right? We can see that of course our topic for today's listening is pollution, right? Now. Right now, with how things are going currently, we're all talking about coronavirus, right? But before this got started, one of the biggest global problems that people were really focused on was pollution, right? And of course, we know what pollution is, right? Pollution is when we look at the sky, it's kind of gray, it looks cloudy, but it's not natural clouds. Of course, this is pollution, right? But pollution also includes stuff that we can see on the ground or the floor, like garbage, right? Garbage is another form of pollution. Or in the past, when I was a child, we used to use spray, uh, hairspray, right? Even from the aerosol cans. That is now basically illegal because it created pollution, right? It created CO2 which damaged the air quality, right? And if we think about some of the most polluted cities or places in the world, I'm sure you can think of some cities that are quite famous for pollution. Of course, um, what comes to my mind is maybe many cities in China, for example, maybe Shanghai or Beijing, or I don't know, uh, probably Guangzhou are quite polluted cities. But how about in your country? What city in your country is well known for having a lot of pollution or for being very polluted, right? So pollution, of course, is the noun, pollution. And we all know what pollution is. But we can change pollution into an adjective to describe a place that has a lot of pollution. We can say, Polluted. So, for example, Beijing is a polluted city, right? Or maybe my hometown is a polluted city. Now, let's go back to my first question. What city in your home country is well known for being polluted? Or what city in your home country has a lot of pollution? Hmm. Now, if we're thinking about Canada, Canada, of course, when you think about it, you might think, oh, it's a very clean country, right? Um, it's very beautiful. And that's true, of course, but we also do have and do create quite a lot of pollution, right? Now, in my home province in Canada, in my home province of British Columbia, Vancouver is actually not very polluted. Yes, there are problems with pollution, but I wouldn't say Vancouver is very polluted. It's quite a green city. However, if you go north in the province of British Columbia, you will come to a smaller city called Prince George. Prince George is well known for being polluted. It's quite a polluted city, right? Or if you go over to the next province, Alberta. Alberta has quite a few polluted places because they have a very large oil and gas industry. So they create lots of pollution. Now, again, thinking about your country, if you are from Brazil, right? I don't know Brazil very well, but you guys, you Brazilian students out there, you guys do. Now, what have I been told? Hmm, some of my friends are Brazilian. I think they have told me that Rio de Janeiro sometimes has a lot of pollution or Rio de Janeiro is polluted. If I think about maybe in Japan, 
What city in Japan is well known for being polluted? Hmm. What city in Japan has a lot of pollution? Okay, I could be wrong here. Remember, I'm no expert. But I think Osaka is well known for being, in Japan anyhow, for being polluted. If you're from Osaka, I'm really sorry, especially if I'm wrong. Um, Osaka is a great city, yeah. Um, and if you're from Korea, what city or what area in Korea is quite polluted? Again, I'm not entirely sure, but a lot of Korean friends of mine have told me cities like maybe Ulsan or maybe Incheon, because Incheon of course has the big international airport. Um, and when I asked my friends if I could go swimming around Incheon International Airport, they said, don't do that because the ocean there is polluted. <clears throat> and I said, oh my God, okay, I won't. Anyhow, guys, let's stop talking so, so much about pollution and finally move on. So take a look here. This is pretty useful. It says types of pollution. Like I said before, there are different types of pollution. And it says, what causes these types of pollution and how bad are they? How can we reduce these levels? Hmm. Okay, so this is actually a lot of work to do because you can see it's broken into three parts here. Causes, how bad, and reducing levels. And we also have air, water, soil, radioactive, noise, and light. Okay, now we're not gonna fill in everything together because that would probably suck up too much time, but let's take a look at this a little bit together, right? So let's start with air, right? And it says, first we got causes. What causes air pollution? Hmm, what do you guys think? Anybody? Okay, well, of course, there are many different things that cause air pollution, right? For example, cars, or basically we could just say traffic, because that would include cars, trucks, and all that kind of stuff, vans, etc., right? So cars, but also factories, right? So let me write some of those words. Actually, let me just write down factory. Okay, so factory is singular. Of course, if you want to say multiple ones, right, you'd say factories. Or we could also say, and I'll have to get a new marker here in a second, manufacturing plants. So manufacturing plants or factories are places where they produce something, right? Like a computer factory makes computers. But while they're making computers, it requires a lot of energy and that creates a lot of pollution, right? And creates a lot of CO2. So I would say the main causes would be traffic and factories. Now, how bad is it? What could we say? How bad is that pollution? Okay, well, we could say it damages the ozone layer, right? Now, you guys might already know ozone. Usually we can just say the ozone, or we can say ozone layer. Now, if you're not aware of this word, the ozone layer is what protects the earth from, you know, getting worse, right? And if the ozone layer is destroyed by pollution, it will open up and when the sun is coming through, it will have more of a negative effect on us, right? So of course, factories that create pollution damage the ozone layer. However, factories that cause pollution also cause problems for humans as well, right? If you live in a very polluted city where there's a lot of air pollution, you might have trouble breathing, right? So those are two main things that are caused by air pollution. It damages the ozone layer and it causes breathing problems. Now it says here, reducing levels. So what do you guys think? How can we reduce levels of air pollution? Now, of course, a lot of you guys might, thinking, might be thinking, well, we need to invest in green energy, right? So usually we can just refer to um, sources of energy that don't create pollution as green energy, right? Now green energy actually includes a lot of different things. That includes things like solar panels, windmills, 
Um, what else? <laughs> uh, geothermal plants. And it might also include nuclear power, right? Because nuclear power doesn't actually make a lot of pollution, but it does make some other bad stuff as well. But green energy is a good way to fight air pollution and reduce levels of air pollution, of course. Okay guys, now that's good enough for that one. Let's take a look at water, right? Now, what causes water pollution? Now, of course, you guys must remember last year, or maybe it was two years ago, when a lot of people were complaining about plastic straws, right? Now, of course, we all like plastic straws when we go to a fast food restaurant, right? We take our plastic straw, and we put it in our drink, and we sip it, right? But a lot of these plastic straws were ending up in the world's oceans, and then sometimes that was hurting marine animals, like whales or fish or dolphins or sharks, things like that, right? So I would say some of the causes of pollution that occurs in the water would be plastics, right? But also we could maybe point the finger again at factories or manufacturing plants because sometimes they create a lot of dirty pollution and they just put it in the ocean or in a river, right? And again, this hurts marine life. This hurts dolphins and fish and that kind of stuff. So the two major things that I would think about in regards to this are, again, manufacturing plants, but also plastics. Now, you guys already know what plastics are, but just in case, I will write that down. Plastic or multiple ones we'll call plastics. Okay, now how bad is it? Um, so like I said before, it hurts marine life, but also it damages their ecosystem, right? I'm sure many of you guys have heard about in Australia, of course, off the coast of Australia, there is the great coral reef, right? And it's, you know, so fantastic and it's so nice. But what you probably heard is more recently, or at least in the past 10, 20, 30 years, is that the coral reef is dying. And the reason why it is dying is because of pollution in the water. And that again includes plastics and pollution created by manufacturing plants, right? So that is the negative consequence of putting, you know, or creating pollution and having it in the water. Okay, now how can we reduce levels of pollution in the water? Well, we have done something, right? Of course, last year, many different companies in Canada and around the world stopped using plastic straws, right? And instead, if you go to a fast food restaurant in Canada, or maybe if you go to, I don't know, 7-Eleven in Canada, when you buy a drink, you cannot use a plastic straw anymore. Instead, you are given a paper straw, right? Which is actually not as good as the plastic, but you know, whatever, we're helping the environment, right? So that's good. How else can we reduce levels of pollution in the ocean? Well, I'm sure there are many other ways, but unfortunately, I'm not aware of them right now. However, maybe you out there, maybe you guys have some good ideas. Okay, but let's move on. We'll just do one more, guys, and then we'll actually move on words here, because the next one we have here, let's skip soil, but I hope you guys know what soil is. Soil is basically the same thing as dirt, right? We grow vegetables, we grow wheat, we grow rice in soil. But let's skip soil. Let's take a look at radioactive one because of course this one can be quite controversial at times, right? Now, radioactive, that's kind of a tough word. What does that mean? Okay, so let's think about radioactive. All right, radioactive energy, of course, is created by nuclear energy energy, right? They're kind of one and the same. So a nuclear power plant that is producing energy from maybe uranium or plutonium is creating radioactive material, right? And you guys might be able to think of the famous symbol. Now, keep in mind, I'm not very good at drawing. Um, <laughs> this looks really bad. Give me a second here. Do, 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 um, bum, 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 there we go. And I'm gonna kind of shave that in. Okay, now you might not have any idea what I'm doing right now, 
but this is basically kind of the symbol for radioactive material, right? Which again is produced by nuclear power plants. Now you guys can probably all remember, well maybe you're too young, but there was an incident, I believe it was in 2011, around 2011, and it was in Japan. Um, so if you're Japanese, you probably know what I'm talking about. And it was in Fukushima. I think it was the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. And that's when there was that horrible uh, tsunami that occurred in Japan and it killed a lot of people, unfortunately. But it also damaged that nuclear power plant in Fukushima, right? And what happened is when that place was damaged, they leaked out a lot of radioactive material. And so many scientists around the world, including Canada, were very, very concerned that there were very high levels of radioactive material in the ocean, in the Pacific Ocean, for example, and this would hurt fish and we shouldn't be consuming fish from the oceans because of this disaster, right? So anyhow, uh, now what are the causes of radioactive material. Of course, I already kind of talked about it. The main thing would be nuclear power plants, but also when nuclear power plants are, how do you say, damaged basically by maybe a natural event or by human error. The other big one that springs to mind besides the Fukushima nuclear power plant is a long, long time ago when I was quite young, when I was a kid, there was a serious problem in the Ukraine, which was part of the Soviet Union at the time, the USSR, and it was in a city called Chernobyl, right? And there was a major problem that occurred at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, and it led to something called a meltdown, right? The place actually completely fell apart. I believe there were explosions, and the nuclear material or radioactive material was being released and they thought that it got into the air and it caused a lot of damage. So even to this day, even though that event occurred, I think it was in 1988, in the late 1980s, like I would have been like a kid at the time, but I kind of remember watching the news and being like, oh my God, you know, we're all gonna die. Um, but anyhow, even today you cannot go to Chernobyl and you cannot visit that area because the, the level of radioactivity is too high and radioactivity causes cancer so of course you want to avoid that so how bad is it um, like I just said high levels of radioactivity causes cancer and causes genetic mutations which is also really really awful now how can we reduce levels of radioactive material well, the answer here is pretty obvious. Stop using nuclear power. However, nuclear power does not actually create pollution. So there are some pros and there are some cons, right? And when we talk about things like this, we often talk about pros and cons, right? Now, if you don't know what pros and cons are, this is a pretty good thing to pay attention to because we often talk about pros and cons in Canada and United States. Pros are basically good things or strong points or advantages. Meanwhile, cons are, you know, disadvantages, negatives, weak points, right? So when we talk about nuclear power, we often talk about the pros and cons. For example, one of the pros is that it does not really create pollution. However, one of the cons is that it creates radioactive material and usually they keep those in what we call kind of oil drums or canisters, right? And they put those ones into the mountain or something like that, right? They try to hide them because you cannot completely eliminate radioactive material. And that's why that crisis in Fukushima was such a big problem is because of the nuclear material or radioactive material was being released into the ocean. Okay guys, but I'm gonna zip it. I'm gonna be quiet because this would actually take too long. Um, we also, so we skipped soil, noise, and light, right? Now actually, really, really briefly though, if we're talking about noise and light, those are kind of more interesting topics because they're not actually talking about 
pollution that damages the environment. When we talk about noise pollution, this is actually a very different kind of pollution. What we're talking about is people playing loud music in public. We can sometimes call that noise pollution. Or if you have a neighbor who's really, really loud at night and you can't sleep very well, you might say, my neighbor creates a lot of noise pollution or that is noise pollution. So when the noise or sound that somebody is making is kind of affecting you in a negative way, you can call it noise pollution, right? Or that kind of reminds me, um, sometimes if you're a Japanese person, you might know this. I think in Japan, actually, there's kind of a lot of noise pollution on the streets. Sometimes there are these loud advertising agencies or advertisements and you think like, oh my God, they're too loud, right? This is like noise pollution, right? And maybe also in Brazil, um, if you're not a party person during the carnival time, and of course carnival is really fun, but I'm sure for some people, they just think, oh my God, that's a lot of noise pollution. So anyhow, just want to explain noise pollution and also light pollution is quite similar. Now there's actually a lot of light pollution more in Asia than there is here. Um, and light pollution just basically means that lights are too bright and maybe they're shining too much, right? So if you're in a place like Tokyo, Seoul, Hong Kong, uh, Shanghai, uh, Taipei, for example, um, there's lots of buildings with so many different color lights on them and they're kind of shooting at you like lasers. And we call this light pollution. It doesn't bother me too much, but Anyhow, anyhow. All right, guys, but we're gonna stop there with that and we're actually gonna take a look at the listening. So please look downwards on your sheet. You guys will see the part here. What I need to do is actually play this for you. So give me a second here, one moment. Um, da -ba 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 -ba. Okay, so we're gonna listen here maybe two or three times. While you guys are listening, try your best to fill in the blanks, right? And some of this stuff is gonna be pretty tough, so you'll really need to pay attention and write it down. Also, I don't have the answer key here, so I also need to take notes while listening. So guys, here we go. Let's try Pollution this out. Pollution is the world's biggest killer. This is breakingnewsenglish.com. A new study has found that pollution is now the world's biggest killer. One in six deaths worldwide is because of pollution. This is 16% of all global deaths. Most of these deaths were from non-infectious diseases caused by pollution. These include heart disease, lung cancer, and stroke. The study was published in the medical journal The Lancet. Researchers said most pollution-related deaths occurred in poorer countries. About 92% of these deaths were in low-income nations, especially countries where there is a lot of economic development, such as India and China. Bangladesh and Somalia were the worst affected countries. Brunei and Sweden had the lowest numbers of pollution-related deaths. Study co-author Cardi Sandelia said pollution Poverty, poor health, and social injustice are deeply intertwined. He added, Pollution threatens fundamental human rights, such as the right to life, health, well-being, and safe work. He said air pollution was the biggest killer. Air pollution led to 6.5 million premature deaths. The second biggest killer was water pollution, which caused 1.8 million deaths. The next largest killer was pollution in the workplace, which was linked to 800,000 worldwide deaths. Scientist Dr. Penny Wood said, Air pollution is reaching crisis point. She said the people who pollution hit the hardest are those with breathing and lung problems, children and the elderly. This is Timothy reporting from Japan. Okay, guys. Yeah, that was pretty tough. Um, that guy's not reading at an extremely fast pace, but he's not reading slowly either, right? So why don't we try to listen to this one more time and you guys continue to try to fill in the blanks here. So here we go again. Pollution is the world's biggest killer. This is breakingnewsenglish.com. 
A new study has found that pollution is now the world's biggest killer. One in six deaths worldwide is because of pollution. This is 16% of all global deaths. Most of these deaths were from non-infectious diseases caused by pollution. These include heart disease, lung cancer, and stroke. The study was published in the medical journal The Lancet. Researchers said most pollution-related deaths occurred in poorer countries. About 92% of these deaths were in low-income nations, especially countries where there is a lot of economic development, such as India and China. Bangladesh and Somalia were the worst affected countries. Brunei and Sweden had the lowest numbers of pollution-related deaths. Study co-author Cardi Sandilia said pollution, poverty, poor health, and social injustice are deeply intertwined. He added, pollution threatens fundamental human rights, such as the right to life, health, well-being, and safe work. He said air pollution was the biggest killer. Air pollution led to 6.5 million premature deaths. The second biggest killer was water pollution, which caused 1.8 million deaths. The next largest killer was pollution in the workplace, which was linked to 800,000 worldwide deaths. Scientist Dr. Penny Woods said, Air pollution is reaching crisis point. She said the people who pollution hit the hardest are those with breathing and lung problems, children and the elderly. This is Timothy reporting from Japan. All right, guys, so I hope this second time you guys listen to this, you were able to catch at least most of the blanks here, but I don't think we're gonna listen again, so why don't we take a look at what should be put in these blanks here. So I'm just gonna erase this stuff. I hope you guys wrote this down beforehand, and let's take a look at what should go in these blanks. Okay, now, like I said before, not too easy, right? It's not like a lot of the vocabulary here is difficult, but each blank here contains more than one word, right? So let's take a look at number one together. So, very beginning of this, we had a new study. Now, what has a new study done? It has done something, so that's our first word, has. And what is the past tense of find? Found, right? Has found what? Okay, well, it has found that pollution, right? has found that. So there we go, there's our first blank. So a new study has found that pollution is now the world's biggest killer. Yikes, sounds pretty scary. And it says here, one in six deaths worldwide is because of pollution. Wow, that's a lot of people dying because of pollution, right? This is 16% of all global deaths. Yikes, most of, okay. Now we got our second blank here. Most of what? Uh, most of these and what's our topic death, right? So most of these deaths Okay, most of these deaths from non-infectious diseases Caused by air pollution. Okay, these include heart disease lung cancer and stroke the new study was published in What, what was it published in now when you think of published that means of course um, it's been put in a, I don't know, maybe a journal, a newspaper, or a magazine, right? In this case, we're talking about journal, ugh, which I shouldn't have given you guys because that's part of the answer, right? But it's been, it's been published in the M journal. And of course, the name of this journal is The Lancet. Now, what kind of journal? What are we talking about? We're talking about pollution. We're talking about how pollution is killing a lot of people. So, of course, that's related to what field? Of course, it's related to the medical field. So, it's the medical journal. The Lancet. Okay, good. Now, it says, researchers said most pollution-related deaths occurred in poor countries. Oh, that's very sad. Okay, about 92% of these deaths were in... And now we got our fourth blank. So most of these pollution related deaths are in poor countries and they have occurred in the something nations. Wow. Mm. Ah, sorry, actually I couldn't read my own writing, but now, now I got it. They occurred in 
not high. What's the opposite? Of course, low. They occurred in low. And then what's this one? Now, of course, you're thinking money. That's true. Um, now think about salary, wages, right? Now think about the money you make in a year. What do we call that? It starts with an I. It's like, you know, like this and like this, right? My daughter always says to me, come, 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 come here, come here, right? Um, so what am I talking about? I'm talking about income, right? Like your yearly salary. So most of those deaths have occurred in low income nations or countries, right? So low income nation or low income nations is just another way to say developing country, right? Or basically, uh, well, nobody wants to say this, but poor country. So of course they're talking about countries like maybe India or I don't know, um, some countries in Africa or something like that, right? So low income nations or poor countries or what we usually refer to them is as developing countries, right? And we refer to high income nations as developed countries. Okay, but anyhow, that's our fourth blank. Let's continue onwards. Number five. Now, it says here, especially countries where there is a lot of what? There's a lot of some kind of huge gap between the rich and the poor. What do we call that? We call that economic. And then, now, if you think of like this symbol here, we all know that means equal, right? Equality, being at the same level. But these countries that are experiencing a lot of deaths due to pollution, they have a high level of economic in E quality, right? So you got in and then we got equality. Now equality of course means that something is equal, right? If there's equality between myself and my brother, we are equal, right? We have the same level of income, we're both at the same level of health, everything's fine. We're the same, right? But if you want to use the opposite of equality, all you have to do is add IN and then it becomes inequality. And inequality means that things are not equal, right? And when we're talking about economic inequality, what we're talking about here is a big gap between the rich and the poor. So, of course, even many developed countries, such as the United States, has a very high level of economic inequality. Or if I think of where I'm living right now in Vancouver, um, sometimes you can see people who are very, very rich, right? They're driving a Ferrari, they live in a mansion. Wow, right? But you can also see quite a few homeless people in Vancouver as well. So there's a really big gap here and we would call that economic inequality. Sometimes we also refer to it as a wage gap, but usually we say economic or financial inequality. Anyhow guys, I'm gonna be quiet. We'll move on to number six. And what do we got here? Um, so where there's a lot of economic uh, inequality, such as India and China. Hmm. Sorry guys, I made a mistake. It actually is not economic inequality. Maybe I just got too excited and I wanted to talk about economic inequality. Sorry guys, it is not, the correct answer here is not economic inequality. Sorry, it was economic development. Ooh, 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 ooh. So anyhow, um, totally wrong. Pretty big mistake there. Um, the correct answer is economic development, not inequality. Although I do think it's true because it says India and China, they have both experienced a lot of economic development. Their economy is growing, right? It's growing very quickly. But they both have, you know, high levels of economic inequality, right? Yeah. Uh, but anyhow, economic development was the correct answer there. Um, now it moves on further, it says Bangladesh and Somalia were the worst affected countries. Brunei and Sweden had, number six, what did Brunei and Sweden have, right? The best food? No, 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 Sweden, they only have Swedish meatballs. They're delicious, but they're not the best. Brunei, I'm sorry I don't know enough about your wonderful country. 
Uh, but Brunei and Sweden had what? They had the, not very low, but actually more than low, they had the lowest, right? And what did they have the lowest of? They had the lowest number of pollution related deaths. So congratulations to Brunei and Sweden, clap clap. They maybe don't create a lot of pollution, so they haven't had a lot of deaths as a result of pollution. So congratulations. Okay, but moving onwards here. Um, study co-author Karti Sandlia said pollution, poverty, and then number seven. Hmm. Ah, okay, okay. So they're here they're talking about something, the opposite of rich course, poor. So pollution, poverty, poor something. Poor what? Basically what we're looking for here is a synonym of well-being, right? And of course we're talking about health. Okay, so pollution, poverty, poor health, ah, we're also forgetting and, poor health, and social injustice are deeply intertwined. If something is intertwined, means they are connected, right? So she continues, or sorry, he continues. He says, he added, pollution threatens fundamental human rights such, now, when we say, when we're making an example, uh, when we say something and we're making an example, we usually say such as, right? So we're gonna start with as, such as, ah, uh, blank, blank, to life, health, well-being, and safe work, okay such as the right to life, health, well-being, and safe work. All right, awesome. Okay, so after that it says here, he said air pollution was the biggest killer. Yikes. Air pollution led to 6.5 million something. Okay, so we're moving on to our ninth blank here. Led to 6.5 million what? Led to 6.5 million eh, deaths. But what kind of deaths? He said here, and this one was really hard to catch. I don't think you guys probably got this, but premature deaths. Okay, so what's the difference between just death and premature deaths? Well, of course, we know what death means. It means you die. You know, eh. Premature. Um, if something is premature, it is not ready. Because pre means before, and then we have mature, right? Like if we say you are mature, you are a mature adult, it means you behave and act like a proper adult, right? Uh, but if, if something is premature, it means before it has become mature. So premature death, the meaning of this is that this person shouldn't die now, but they did. They died, they should have lived longer, but because of, I guess, air pollution or some kind of pollution, it has led to a premature death. Maybe it affected the person's lungs or something like that. Okay, so number nine, we got premature death. Number, the next one, number 10, anyhow, it says the second biggest killer was water pollution, which caused 1.8 million deaths. Yikes, that's a lot of deaths. And after that, we've got our next blank here. So number 10 says, dun dun dun, killer was pollution in the workplace. Okay, so we're talking about the biggest killer being, uh, what is it, air pollution, 6.5 million deaths. After that, Water pollution, 1.8 million deaths. Next, we're talking about 800 million, or sorry, 800,000 deaths. So we got the number one, the second largest, and then after that says the next largest. The next largest. Okay, so the next largest killer was pollution in the workplace, which was linked to 800,000 worldwide deaths. Yikes. Now, scientist Dr. Penny Woods said, air pollution is blank, blank. Hmm, okay. So what is Dr. Penny talking about, right? Dr. Penny is very cheap, right? He's only worth one cent. 
Okay, that's a bad joke. You'd have to understand um, what pennies are. Okay, but forget about it. Okay, so Dr. Penny Woods said air pollution is something something. Hmm. She said the people who pollution hit the hardest are those with breathing and lung problems, children, and then also 12. All right, guys. Now, actually, this was extremely hard to catch right near the end of this uh, listening activity. I think what we should do is probably listen again very briefly and try to catch it together. So I'm going to speed this up to the last 20 seconds and let's listen one more time. 8 million deaths. The next largest killer was pollution in the workplace, which was linked to 800,000 worldwide deaths. Scientist Dr. Penny Woods said, air pollution is reaching crisis point. She said the people who pollution hit the hardest are those with breathing and lung problems, children and the elderly. This is Timothy reporting from Japan. Okay guys, so we had kind of three difficult words in a row here, but she, he said, scientist Dr. Penny Wood said air pollution is, oh, that's my hint, something with an R, ING form, uh, it is reaching. Reaching, and then here's a good word, tough one. Um, now this word describes an event that's really, really awful um, or need, requires urgent attention, right? And that is crisis. Reaching crisis, what? Reaching crisis, what am I doing? Mm? What am I doing? Mm. I'm pointing, right? Reaching crisis point. Okay, now if something is reaching a crisis point, it's reaching a point in time where things are becoming really urgent and we should really, really pay attention, right? So of course, a lot of people believe that issues with pollution, issues with global warming are reaching crisis point. However, right, right now, people are more worried about coronavirus, of course, right? But anyhow, our last blank here, she said the people who pollution hit the hardest are those with breathing and lung problems, children, and the now basically we're just this next word we're looking for here starting with an e basically it's the opposite of children right and the what what's another way to refer to old people well we can always call them the elderly the elderly of course pollution affects children in a very negative way but it also really, really has a negative effect on the elderly because their body and physical condition is not as good as young adults, right? Okay guys, so we got all the blanks here. I hope you guys wrote this down and filled it in. What we should do next is take a look at some of our comprehension questions. So we've got true or false questions first. Let's just go over this together orally and we don't need to spend too much time on it. So let's take a look at number one. It says one in six deaths worldwide is because of pollution. Now, is this true or is that false? Now think back, this is actually pretty easy. If you think about just the second sentence here, it does clarify. It says one in six deaths worldwide is because of pollution. So ding, 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 it is true. Oh, now I don't want to erase this yet. So I'm just going to write number one, T for true. How about number two? It says most deaths from pollution were because of infectious diseases. Okay, so take a look back in the article. Where does it mention infectious diseases? It says most of these deaths were from non-infectious diseases. Okay, non-infectious diseases, so it's just from pollution. So actually number two, most deaths from pollution were because of infectious diseases. No, this is false. All right, let's take a look at number three together. Most pollution related deaths were in richer countries. Now remember what they were talking about with economic development and inequality, um, right around here where I made that mistake. They were saying there were a lot of deaths in countries like India and China and not as many deaths in other countries like Sweden and Brunei. So actually most pollution related deaths were in richer countries no, this is not true. Actually, a lot of these deaths are occurring in poorer countries or low-income nations or developing countries. So let's say false. Okay. Number four, guys. Bangladesh and Sweden 
have the lowest pollution related death rates. Huh, this looks good, right? Because it's mentioning Sweden and we know that Sweden had a very low death rate due to pollution. But take a look back at the article. Where does it talk about Sweden? Ah, it says Brunei and Sweden, not Bangladesh and Sweden. So tricky, tricky. Um, yes, no, this is not true because it should be Brunei, not Bangladesh. So false. All right, guys, number five here. A researcher said pollution and social injustice are strongly linked. Ah, okay. Now this brings up that good word again. Back in the article it says social injustice, economic inequality, blah, blah, blah. These things are intertwined, right? And so intertwined means that they are linked. So yes, this is true. Uh, pollution and social injustice are strongly linked. Yes, that's true. Moving on to number six, guys. The researcher said pollution threatens human rights. Now, that's kind of tricky, right? But take a look back. Where does the researcher talk about this? Dun, 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 dun. Ah, says he added. Now, this is in between blank seven and blank eight. He added pollution threatens fundamental human rights, such as the right to life, health, well-being, and safe work. So, does the researcher, researcher say pollution threatens human rights? Yes, he does. This is true. All right. On to number seven. Water pollution was the biggest killer. Mm, what do you think? They talk about the three biggest killers related to pollution. Now, actually, this is false because we know after number eight, before blank nine, says air pollution led to 6.5 million deaths worldwide. So actually, no, air pollution is the biggest killer when it comes to pollution, not water pollution. So we know that one's false. And lastly, number eight, guys, a scientist said pollution is so bad it is reaching crisis point. And yes, we just talked about that here. Scientists are saying that it is reaching a crisis point, um, this really, really awful negative point. So this is true. Okie doke, guys. Now, we just finished the true or false comprehension questions. Of course, there is the other side to this listening activity here on the back side. We have some regular comprehension questions. Um, it looks like we're about to go into the break, but let's just take a look at number one orally at first. It just says here, how many deaths worldwide are caused by pollution? Okay, so can you guys answer that? How many deaths worldwide are caused by pollution? Well. Remember, they said one in six deaths is caused by pollution. So if we were not writing full, complete answers, I would just say one in six deaths is caused by pollution. And maybe I'll write that down after the break. But what I think we're going to do, guys, is we're going to take a break here pretty soon. Um, we'll continue this just a little bit because we have other things to do. We'll continue this a little bit and then we're gonna move on to actually a reading article, right? But I'll see you guys in a little bit. I'm gonna take a break. Bleh. Hope you guys wrote down everything here.
Okay guys, so actually we're not just gonna move on really quickly. I wanna go back to pollution is the world's biggest killer. And I kinda wanna finish this off with you guys first before we move on to this reading article. The reading article is actually also quite long. So I think what we're gonna do today is finish the listening, also do the reading. Maybe as far as our elective is concerned, we might not have enough time to look at it in detail. So, but anyhow, let's take a look at our comprehension questions here on the back. I would like to write down f a full sentence answer for you guys. So, right before the break, of course, we looked at the first one. How many deaths worldwide are caused by pollution? Now, we know the answer here is one in six, right? Because if we take a look back here, it says, Da, da, da. one in six deaths worldwide is because of pollution. So that's basically what we can say here. One in six deaths. Now we could say also worldwide. Now it says are caused by pollution, but in this case one in six deaths worldwide are caused by pollution. All right, so that's a good answer. So let's move on to number two. What kind of cancer was mentioned? Okay, now again, go back to the actual article. Within the first one, two, three, four, if you take a look at the fourth line, it says here, okay, these include heart disease, lung cancer, and stroke. Okay, now they did mention other forms of cancer later as well, but Ding, 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 in that fourth line, we have an answer, lung cancer. So what kind of cancer was mentioned? Lung cancer was mentioned. Of course, our lungs are, ding, 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 right here, used for breathing. Okay, number three, what percent of pollution-related deaths were in low-income nations? Actually, I'm thinking about this right now. Um, I can't remember if they mentioned a certain percent, so I'm going to have to look back at this as well. Da, 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 da. Ah, okay, they did mention one. So guys, take a look at what it says right before the fourth blank. So that is actually in the fifth line. It says about 92% of these deaths were in low-income nations, right? So they didn't mention that. So we'll just start with the answer. 92% of pollution related deaths were in developing countries. Now, please remember, you might be like, oh my God, why is he saying developing countries and not low income countries? Well, just remember, developing countries, poor countries, low-income nations or countries, basically all these terms are interchangeable, right? They all have the same basic meaning. Okay, so ding, ding, ding. There's our answer for number three. Let's move on, guys, to number four. We've got, what were the worst affected countries? Okay, so we need to like pinpoint some example countries that were really horribly affected by pollution. Ah. So again, around the fourth and fifth point, says low-income nations, especially countries where there is a lot of economic development, such as India and China. Now, right after that, the next sentence starts by saying, Bangladesh and Somalia were the worst affected countries. Okay, so there's our answer. Bangladesh and Somalia. Bangladesh and Somalia were the worst affected. Hmm. Now maybe I picked the wrong black marker again. This one seems to be dying on me. Okay, give me a second. There we go. Hopefully this one's better. Okay. So, ah, now number five is, on the other hand, what, hmm, oh no, that is a bit better, okay. So on the other hand, number five says, what were the least affected countries? Now, can you guys remember? Because I did talk about them. One of them is in Northern Europe and one of them is in 
Southeast Asia, uh, but a rich country in Southeast Asia with a monarchy. Um, so one is, of course, Sweden, and the other one is Brunei, because it says here, da, 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 right after Bangladesh and Somalia were the worst affected countries, Brunei and Sweden had the lowest number of pollution-related deaths. So, Brunei, Brunei, and Sweden. And the way we went on was, were the least effective. Were the least affected. Okay, good. So good for Brunei and Sweden. Let's move on to comprehension question number six. What kind of injustice is mentioned in the article? Okay, what kind of injustice? So try to find the word injustice and see what it's connected to. Let's see here. Dun, 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 dun. Ah, okay. So, number seven, guys, is pollution, poverty, poor health, and social injustice. So, again, we're going to say social injustice was mentioned. Now, I can see how this term here is kind of tough. Now, I think you guys know what justice is, right? Now, actually, justice is actually quite a hard word to explain, right? But if you watch, for example, a lot of superhero movies, a lot of superheroes like maybe Batman, Superman, uh, Spider-Man, etc., they really care a lot about justice, right? If somebody commits a crime, they must be punished appropriately. That is justice, right? People shouldn't commit crime. If we lived in a just world with a lot of justice, nobody would commit crime. Now, of course, injustice is the opposite of justice. So if there is a lot of injustice that occurs in a country, it means that bad people are doing bad things and they are not being punished for it. So social injustice would, dis like a country with a high level of social injustice, would be a country where maybe rich and powerful people can do really terrible things and they do not get punished, right? So off the top of my head, maybe countries such as, for example, Russia have a very high level of social injustice, but also countries that they mentioned like uh, previously, Somalia and Bangladesh also have a very high level of social injustice. Anyhow. Let's take a look, guys, at number seven. So, number seven here, guys. What kind of pollution was the biggest killer? So remember, they talked about three different forms of pollution, and they mentioned how many deaths they caused, right? Um, so they mentioned air pollution, water pollution, and I believe it was pollution in the workplace, right? Dun, 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 yeah, pollution in the workplace. Those were the three mentioned, but of course, the number one killer mentioned was air pollution. So what kind of pollution was the biggest killer? Air pollution. Now we can say was, but actually it really should be is because I'm pretty sure it continues to be. Um, but either or, was or is in this case is okay for the answer. Air pollution was or is the biggest killer. Well, maybe we should say was because maybe currently it not it it isn't actually right um, because I think coronavirus is the number one killer and air pollution has actually decreased a lot because of it. But anyhow, number eight. Let's take a look here. We've got how many people did water pollution kill? Okay, so water pollution was the one that was mentioned after air pollution, and it says here he said air pollution was the biggest killer. Blah 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 blah. Um, the second biggest killer was water pollution, which caused 1.8 million deaths. So yikes, that's a big number. Um, so again, how many people did water pollution kill? Water pollution kills killed 1.8 million people, which is a very high number. Okay, 
All right, guys, but moving on to number nine, what kind of pollution killed 800,000 people? Of course, that was the third one mentioned. I already talked about it. That is work-related pollution. I believe that's how they referred to it. No, 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 no. Okay, there was pollution in the workplace. So basically, we could just say pollution in the workplace. Pollution in the workplace, do, do, do. what kind of pollution killed 800,000? Yeah, killed 800,000 people. Yikes, that's a high number. So I guess this would be probably like workplaces in developing countries, low income countries, um, in poor countries, right? Um, so maybe in their workplace, maybe it's a manufacturing plant or factory. Right, maybe there's a lot of pollution being created, right? And unfortunately, it's killing people. Anyhow, guys, number 10, and I hope you guys can see this, but of course, I'm gonna say it out loud. Our last question here says, what kind of point did a scientist say air pollution is reaching? So he said it's reaching a crisis point, right? And again, if something is reaching a crisis point, it's something that we really need to pay attention to, right? So, and it was a he, right? What kind of point is that? Yeah, it was he. He said it was reaching a crisis point. And there we go. Okay, guys, so that's all of our answers for the comprehension questions here. Um, that did suck up a fair amount of time, of course. And there's still the discussion section here. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Hmm. Maybe I'm going to go over this really quickly and just give you guys some oral examples because, of course, we still need to move on to the reading. So let's take a look at this together. I'm just going to provide you guys with oral examples. But number one says, what images are in your mind when you hear the word crisis? So when you hear that word crisis, what image, what picture is in your mind? Okay. So when I imagine the word crisis, or the first image that pops into my mind when I hear the word crisis is things like global warming, or things like uh, infectious disease like coronavirus, or things like a nuclear war. Whenever I think of crisis, I think of some kind of really terrible event, right? Um, like right now, the world economy is in crisis, or the world is in crisis because of coronavirus. Okay, but let's take a look at number two. What is pollution like where you live? Okay, that's a good question for me. What is pollution like where I live in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada? Um, to be honest, I think pollution here is not so bad. Vancouver does not really produce anything. We don't have a lot of factories. We don't have a lot of manufacturing plants, so therefore there is not too much pollution. However, in the summertime, usually in about August, um, in the areas around Vancouver in the countryside, uh, British Columbia has a lot of trees, for example, and sometimes there are some really big forest fires in the countryside. But it creates a lot of smoke, of course, and sometimes that smoke comes into Vancouver, and yes, this is pollution. Most of this pollution is created naturally, however, it's caused by lightning strikes, maybe sometimes caused by people accidentally starting a fire in the forest, but usually it's just caused naturally by lightning, but it creates a lot of smoke and it's, it's pretty bad pollution. It's happened for about the past two, three years. It's not very nice. You can see a lot of smoke and it smells like smoke everywhere. Ugh. But anyhow, hopefully that doesn't happen this year. Let's take a look at number three. How affected are you by pollution? On a personal level for me, I would say I am not very affected by pollution. Um, I cannot say that it affects my life. However, if I lived in a polluted community, um, I think it would. Ugh. Yeah, that's not exactly true. Thinking about, again, about the summertime here in Vancouver, uh, when the smoke came into Vancouver, it was unpleasant for me, but it was okay. It was unpleasant. I didn't like it. 
but it was not very good for my daughter. So at the time, I was very worried about my daughter's health, and I didn't let her go outside. But anyhow, okay. So number four, how did pollution get to be this bad? Okay, so how did pollution get to become such a huge crisis? How did it reach this crisis point? Um, well, I think the answer to that is pretty obvious. The answer is that there are over 7 billion people and we all want access to uh, a good lifestyle and in order to produce that lifestyle, we must make products and we must make money. So we have to have factories, we have to have manufacturing and services and that creates pollution um, and everybody wants to drive a car. Um, so I guess that's the reason why pollution has gotten this bad. Another reason why is because, I don't know, um, certain people in major countries like Canada, the United States, uh, maybe they work in the oil industry or they are a politician and many of them do not want to believe that global warming is real because that affects their industry, right? So they believe it isn't true, so they don't want change. However, I think there are a lot of good things that have come out of this, um, things like uh, Tesla cars, for example. So, of course, you guys might know Elon Musk, um, the great inventor. Um, actually, he has Canadian citizenship. His background is pretty interesting. He's from South Africa, but he moved to Canada, went to university in Canada, then he went to the United States. I think technically he is an American citizen now, but um, he's like a American, no, no, he's a South African Canadian American, Ugh, right? Uh, but anyhow, you guys probably know that he is the owner and inventor of Tesla and he's created a lot of those electric vehicles and I think things like that are helping to reduce pollution. So I don't think it's all bad. I think we are making positive changes. Number five, how much do you worry about pollution? Hmm. Um, honestly, again, because I live in Vancouver and I don't see pollution that often, I am not very worried about pollution. Um, however, sometimes I read newspaper articles that do make me worried about pollution. And sometimes I meet people who make me worry about pollution. Actually, um, some Korean students told me last year that when children are drawing the sky in Korea, they're not dry, drawing it blue, they were drawing it just gray all the time. So I thought that was kind of sad. Um, so I feel bad for those kids. But anyhow, um, number six, how can we reduce the amount of pollution? Hmm, <laughs> that's a tough one. Uh, you try to use less plastics, try to drive less, use more public transportation or walk use a bicycle. Um, what else can we do? Hmm. Don't use plastic straws. Try to use something else. Uh, if you can, if you can afford it, buy an electric vehicle. It's not just Tesla. There's also Toyota or many other car brands that have electric vehicles, but that is expensive. Try, buy one if you can, right? Um, hmm. Yeah, that's all I have to say about that. And Number seven, why are most deaths in poor countries? Hmm, uh, my opinion would be most deaths are in poor countries because there's more manufacturing in poor countries like China or, well, China's not exactly a poor country, um, but a middle income country. But China or other developing countries usually have more manufacturing than a lot of developed countries now. And so they create more pollution. And I think the government, and government regulations or government policy does not really help to protect the people very much and I think there is a lot of corruption and social injustice tied to that and because of that I think more people die to to or because of pollution okay um, number eight what do you think when you see pollution what do I think when I see pollution hmm, I usually think that's too bad I wish there was no pollution Oh, hey, greetings from Daniel, Daniel Diaz. Hey, Daniel, hey, 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 yeah. Uh, Daniel, long time no see. It's good to see you. That, I'm happy to hear that you're, um, you're a teacher now. Yeah, great, that's awesome, Daniel. Yeah, I remember, la when was that? Not, not last year. Well, that was kind of last year. That was the beginning of last year, yeah. 
Anyhow, it's nice to see you. I'll continue with this though, but it's good to see you, Daniel. What do you think when you see pollution? Okay, yeah, I kind of answered that already. What do I think? Yeah, unfortunately, I usually just think that's too bad. Um, and I wish somebody would do something about that, but usually I can't do anything about it myself. Okay, yes, and last question here says, what will happen if pollution gets worse? Okay, what will happen if pollution gets worse? I think the answer here is quite obvious. If pollution gets worse, global warming will get worse. And if global warming gets worse, we're going to have some major, major problems, right? The sea levels will rise and we will lose a lot of land around the world. It will damage agriculture, it will destroy cities, etc. Um, and maybe there will be wars because of it. So, of course, if pollution gets worse, global warming will get worse, and this will create a really huge crisis. Okay, guys, but that is it for the discussion questions. I know I talked kind of quickly there. I do think, although it's a bit strange, you guys should think about this yourselves. If there's somebody watching with you, try to discuss it with them later and get some practice. But, of course, we have to move on, guys, to our reading article, which is definitely going to go into our third class today. And our reading article for today, looks like a good one, is Culture, My Diary in Canada. Hmm, so we're talking about culture, or I hope we are, and that should be interesting, right? Okay, but we're starting with some warm-up questions again so ugh, i have to continue to talk here right so warm-up questions kind of interesting warm-up questions because i don't know if this is about cult well it is about culture okay it says number one here what do you usually buy at the supermarket all right guys so think what do you guys usually buy at the supermarket hmm what do you buy at the supermarket all right well for me, usually when I go to the supermarket, I'm buying, you know, pretty ordinary things, right? Produce, right? Which means vegetables. Um, onions, carrots, lettuce, broccoli, uh, green onions, etc. Uh, I also usually purchase a couple of different meat products. So, pork, chicken, beef, right? Along with that, I uh, usually get some seafood, of course, uh, where I'm living in Canada, this place is famous for salmon. So I try to buy some salmon, especially if it's on sale. And, of course, and this word you guys might not know, so I'm going to write this word down. I will always buy one of the staple foods, right? Now, that term might seem kind of weird to you, staple food or staple foods, right? Because you might be thinking of staple, used to put two pieces of paper together or more, right? Um, but that, you wouldn't want to eat staples, right? And then your mouth would bleed. It would be terrible. Uh, but anyhow, staple foods though means like kind of basic food or common food. Or actually a better way to put it would be like basic carbohydrates, right? And usually we don't say carbohydrate, we say carb. But that means things like, do, 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 do. example, that means things like bread, uh, rice, pasta, etc., potatoes, etc., etc. So in every different country, not in every different country, but you know, the staple food in Korea is rice. Staple food in Japan is also rice, as it is in China, etc. Um, the staple food in a country like Italy would probably be pasta and bread, or in France, I believe it would be bread. Maybe potatoes would be there too. If we think about Canada, the staple food in Canada, Ugh, staple food in Canada. Canada is pretty diverse now, right? A lot of people from many different countries. Traditionally, staple food in Canada would be potatoes. And so when I was a kid, we had potatoes every night for dinner. Uh, but it depends on your background. For a lot of other people, it might be bread. In Vancouver, probably rice is number one. Uh, out east, I don't know. If you're Italian, Canadian, probably pasta. Anyhow, all right, but moving on. Have you ever stolen something? Hoo-hoo, right? Ooh, that's a tough question. Um, have I ever stolen anything? Hmm, when was the last time I stole something? 
Just kidding. Uh, but yes, I think I have stolen something. What? Mmm. I stole my wife's heart. Bleh, right? Ooh, That's terrible. That's too cheesy. Okay, never mind. Never mind. Um, when was the last time I stole something? Uh, oh, wow. I really can't remember. Probably, ah, uh, yeah, okay. Okay, this is the example I'm thinking of right now. Uh, before I was married, before I met my wife, I used to live with roommates in Vancouver, and I used to steal my roommate's leftovers. Okay, now that sounds bad, but let, let me tell you a story, and let me explain leftover and leftovers, right? So there's leftover something, and then there's just leftovers. Now you could say leftover pizza, leftover fried rice, leftover uh, salad, whatever it is. Now you think of this word leftover, leftover. The meaning of this, what leftovers are, is maybe you cook too much food for dinner, you eat it, but you have some food that remains, right? There's some food that is left over, right? So you pack that up, you put it in the fridge, and we call that leftovers, right? But you could also specify what it is. You could say leftover pizza, for example, right? Now, okay, let me tell you the story about me stealing leftovers from my roommate. Okie dokie. So, um, I lived with a Japanese guy a long, long time ago. He was my roommate. And I remember one night I had made some, I think it was just fried rice, right? I made too much. So I ate it that night and I packed up the leftovers, put it in the fridge. And I thought, okay, this is awesome. I'm going to eat this tomorrow and I don't have to cook. Yay, right? Anyhow, so next day after I was done work, I was walking home and I thought, wow, this is awesome. I don't have to cook because I have leftover fried rice in the fridge. I can just microwave and eat it. Yay, right? Um, I don't know why I was so happy about that at the time. Anyhow, so go home and I open the fridge and I can't find my leftovers, right? I'm like, where, where did my leftovers go? What, what the hell? It's not here, right? And I looked around and I couldn't find it. And I actually called out my roommate's name. I was like, Kazuma, are you here? And he's not here, right? And I look around though, but his door is open. And I could see through his door. On his desk, there was the plastic container that contained my leftovers, my leftover fried rice. And there were chopsticks in there. And he had eaten it, right? So I was like, oh my God, my roommate ate my leftovers. And I was really kind of upset about this, right? So I decided, you know, I could confront him, right? I could meet him, be like, hey, Kazma, why did you eat my leftovers? Or what I could do is next time he puts leftovers in the fridge, I'm going to eat them. So I went with the second option, right? I thought, okay, uh, next time he puts some leftovers in the fridge, I'm going to eat them. So I think the next day or the day after that, he had left some leftovers in the fridge. I took it, I ate it. And then he never confronted me. I never confronted him. And sometimes I would pack something, put it in the fridge, and he would eat it again, right? And he would steal my leftovers. So we kept stealing each other's leftovers again and again and again. Now, actually, you would think Kazuma, my ex-roommate, and I had a really bad relationship. Actually, no, we had a really good relationship. We were very friendly. But we never talked about this situation with the leftovers and all the stealing going on. Now, everything was fine, but right before he left Japan, uh, left to go to Japan, I said, Kazuma, you're one of the best roommates I've ever had. I'm going to miss you, but I don't know why you stole my leftovers. And then he said, no, Alan, I never stole your leftovers, and that's why you were stealing mine. I was like, uh-huh. He said, that wasn't me. That was your friend Daniel. Remember, you gave Daniel keys to the apartment. Your friend came over and ate your leftovers, and then you thought it was me. And I was like, oh, whoops. So actually, it was a big misunderstanding, and I had been eating his leftovers for about three months. He also ate mine, though. Anyhow, that story is really not important. Sorry for going off topic. Uh, so anyhow, guys, but let's get on to, yeah, so that was my answer for number two. Yes, I have stolen something. I used to steal my ex-roommate's leftovers. Now. You guys, we've got to take a look at this warm-up reading here. We're gonna, I'm going to read through this, so you guys should read along, and then we're going to take a look at some vocabulary. So, 
Um, our title here is Honesty Shopping in Switzerland. Yay, our article is about Switzerland. So it says here, in the Swiss Alps, there are communities with tiny stores known as Honesty Shops. They sell fresh cheese, milk, bread, honey, and butter without any clerks. These stores are managed through the honor system. The customers just put their money in a small basket after finding what they need to buy. The amazing thing is, customer honesty and loyalty is very strong in these communities. So, would this kind of store be possible in your city? Hmm, okay, so this is very interesting. The idea of honesty shopping that they have here in Switzerland. Now, beneath this here, we've got some words that have been highlighted and we need to take a look at the meaning. So the first word here is honesty, right? So honesty is like tea that's very honest, right? So you've got some green tea and they never, the green tea never lies to you, right? Honest tea. Okay, bad. That's a bad joke. So anyhow, honesty. So that is the noun. Now, basically honesty means, or the opposite of honesty would be like deception or lies, right? Because if you believe in honesty, you believe in telling the truth, in not telling a lie. So honesty is the noun, and if you wanna use this as an adjective, it is simple, we just say honest, right? So if somebody says to you, you are an honest person, they're saying you are the kind of person that doesn't lie, you're the kind of person who tells the truth, right? And if somebody says you're an honest person, that's a really good thing, right? You say, oh, thank you for complimenting me. Okay, so there's honesty, and the next word here is community, right? What is community? So basically, community is just another word for like group, or group of people, or some other synonyms would be like neighborhood, city, town, um, something like this. So, like I would say my hometown terrace is a very nice community, right? Um, usually we don't refer to larger cities as being a community, like Vancouver community, because Vancouver is quite big, or the Seoul community, or the Tokyo community. Um, but usually it refers to smaller towns having a community, right? But community is just a group of people, or like a town, right? But within Vancouver, there are many different communities. Okay, next term we have here is tiny. Tiny is a good adjective, right? Um, so tiny, and of course community is a noun, but tiny is an adjective. Tiny basically just means very, very small, right? Not maybe micro or microscopic, but it means very, very small, right? Um, so if you say to your friend, hey, can I borrow some money? And your friend says, hey, sorry, I only have a tiny amount of money left. He's saying, I just have a very small amount of money. Please don't ask me for money, right? Or if somebody says, you know, somebody says, you have a tiny brain, right? They're saying your brain is very, 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 very small. And that is an insult. And you should, you should say something back to them, right? But anyhow, tiny just means, and it's a good adjective, very, very small. After that, we have clerk. Okay, clerk, eh, that's kind of a boring one. A clerk is somebody who works in a store, right? And usually at the cash register. Um, so when you buy a product, you go up to the clerk, they say it costs you know, this amount, and you pay the clerk, right? So yeah, the clerk at 7-Eleven, 7-Eleven clerk, or Walmart clerk, or Something like that, not too interesting. Next term we got here is the honor system. Okay, now we know what a system is, right? A system is something that's been set into place and controls things, um, but maybe honor is a little bit harder. So let's focus on honor. Now, Canadians and British people will spell honor with a U, Australians and Kiwis as well. However, Americans will remove that U um, because they just like doing that. 
Um, so anyhow, there is honor, right? And there's also the adjective form, honorable, honorable person. Now, honor is actually kind of hard to explain, but what honor means, um, the idea of honor is the idea of something good, right? If you are an honorable person, this means that you're also, it, it's kind of linked to being honest. If you're honorable, it means that you are, you, you don't lie, you tell the truth, you do what is right, right? You are a, basically a very good person, right? Um, usually when we think of people who are very honorable, we think about maybe again superheroes, right? Superman is very honorable. Or we think about kings and queens and princes from a long time ago and we think like, oh, that person was a very good king, very, very honorable king, right? Um, actually, I can't think of any real world examples. Who was an honorable king? Ooh, that's kind of hard. Or maybe an honorable president in the United States, maybe, oh, not the current one. Um, ah, okay, but President Obama, I thought he had a lot of honor. I thought he was a very honorable man. He was good to his wife, he was good to his kids. He tried his best. He tried to do what is right. So I would say he is a very honorable man. But anyhow, the honor system though, the honor system is a system where people are not checking you. Instead, they rely on you to be honest and honorable. And that's what they were doing in this store in Switzerland. They rely on the customers to put money in this basket to pay for these products that they take and nobody is watching them, right? There's no clerk, there's no camera. They go in, they take what they need, they put money in the basket and they leave, right? So the store, it sounds, for I think a lot of people, it sounds kind of stupid, right? Uh, but it works because everybody in that community believes in the system. Now actually in Vancouver, uh, of course we have public transportation in Vancouver. We have something called the SkyTrain, right? And the SkyTrain system is not based on the honor system. Of course you have to pay and get a ticket or you have a card and then you can go through some gates. However, um, they only set that system up about six or seven years ago. Before that, they did have an honor system in Vancouver for taking the SkyTrain. So for example, you could purchase a ticket or you could get a monthly pass, but you didn't have to go through any gate. You could just go straight through the station and go get on a SkyTrain and go somewhere. Sometimes maybe the police would check you, but that was actually rare. So that was all based upon the honor system. Now, unfortunately, in Vancouver, um, a lot of people did follow the honor system. They would buy the ticket or they would get the monthly pass, but there were also quite a few people who would not get the ticket. And because of that, the company was losing a lot of money. So finally, they decided to stop it with the honor system and then actually install some gates. Anyhow guys, and the last one we have here, ooh, this is also a really good word, loyalty. Um, so there's loyalty, which sounds a lot like honesty, right? Like, you know, the T that's very honest always tells you the truth. Loyalty is a T that's always good to you, right? They'll always be your friend. Ugh, terrible, right? Um, so loyalty is the noun and loyal is the adjective. Now, don't confuse this and don't mess up the pronunciation with royal, right? Because there's royalty and there are royals, right? And of course, royals, royalty is talking about kings, queens, dukes, princes, that kind of stuff. Um, and royals is just an individual, right? Queen Elizabeth is a royal. Queen William, or Queen William, geez. Uh, Prince William is a royal, but yeah, loyalty and loyal, royalty and royal, right? So you gotta really stress the first sound, l l l loyal, r r r royal. Anyhow, loyalty and loyal. So loyalty is the idea of kind of when you make a connection with somebody, 
not betraying them, not going behind their back and saying bad things about them or stabbing them in the back for some kind of advantage, right? If you are, let's say, when we're in a marriage, we often talk about loyalty a lot, right? If you are a loyal wife or a loyal husband, this means you believe in your wife, you believe in your husband, you don't go meet other women or men and start a relationship with them. You don't cheat on your spouse, your wife or husband, you are loyal. And of course, we have a saying in English, we say man's best friend. And when we're talking about man's best friend, we're talking about an animal. What animal is man's best friend? What animal is the most loyal to humans? Of course, we're talking about dogs, right? Dogs are very loyal pets, right? They always wait for you. They always watch you. They want to protect you. Um, so yeah, we often say man's best friend is dogs because they're very, very loyal animals. Royal, on the other hand, not so much. But anyhow, good term, right? Um, now, maybe if you're a woman or a man, you might say, I'm looking for a loyal girlfriend or I'm looking for a loyal boyfriend, somebody who will believe in me and not cheat on me and this kind of stuff. Okay. All right, guys. So we got those questions done. Now, before, of course, we also have the reading on the back side to do. But before we do that, we got some quick check here and we got some questions. So it says true or false. So take a look at A and I'm going to give you guys a question. You guys think about the answer. I'll give you like five seconds and I'll give you the answer. So true or false? A. These stores have clerks. What do you guys think? Of course our answer is false because they don't have clerks. Okay, so false. Good, good. B. People don't have to use money at these stores. Hmm. Is this true? Is this false? Well, this one here, people don't have to use money at these stores. No, this is false because it says they do have to leave money in a basket, right? So even though there's no clerk, they still are required to pay, but it's through the honor system. Okay, and C, customer honesty and loyalty is very high in these communities. Hmm, is this true or false? Well, take a look at the last sentence here. The amazing thing is customer honesty and loyalty is very strong in these communities. Ding, ding, ding. Okay, so there's our answer. Pretty easy. The answer is true. Now it says here, second question, what kind of things do people buy at an honesty shop? So a lot of food items, right? What were they buying? They're buying things like cheese, milk, bread, uh, honey, butter, these kind of things, right? Okay, so good. And number three, fill in the blanks with similar words. Okay, so think about it here guys. There are, now beneath it you've got neighborhoods. There are blank neighborhoods. So there are communities, right? There are communities with, and then it says in parentheses here, small. So that tiny. So there are communities with tiny stores known as honesty shops. The stores are managed through, and it says here, honesty rules. Okay, it's managed through the honor system, right? The honor system. That means the stores have no workers or clerks. Okay, and there we go, guys. All right, so bada bing, bada boom, we're all done. What we need to do, guys, though, is go to the back side because this is our main page here. And I think what we're gonna do before we take a break is we're going to do, 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 do. We're actually gonna start the main reading here. We'll read through this. We'll take a look at a little bit of vocabulary. Then we'll probably have to take a break. But before I do that, you guys should start reading right now. I'm just gonna erase the board here and then I'm gonna start reading. So one second. Okay, so there we go, guys. All right, so, dun, 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 dun. so this is not about Switzerland anymore. It says, life in Canada, diary writing 
Number eight. Okay, so let me read this for you guys. I was so embarrassed today. I went out for dinner with my friends after school at a really nice restaurant. I ordered a big bacon burger with yam fries and I got a milkshake for dessert. When the bill came, my friends and I decided not to split it. So we paid for our own. The bill was $21.50. I gave the server a 20, a loony, and two quarters. So I paid exactly $21.50. However, the server looked at me and she seemed angry. I don't know why. I felt really weird and bad. After I got back home, I talked to my Canadian roommate about it. He told me that we must add a tip to the bill when we eat in a restaurant. He said a tip is extra money you give when the server is very nice. If you are unhappy with the service, you can leave a tiny tip. But if you are happy, you should leave a big one. I felt so bad because I didn't leave a tip for her, but I liked her service. That's why she was upset. So today I learned a new Canadian custom. I must remember to tip every time I eat out. I think I'll go broke very soon. Mm, true, right? All right, guys, so I think this is a pretty common experience that a lot of maybe international students or just foreign tourists have when they come to countries like Canada or America, where the tipping culture is very strong here. Of course, they do accept tips in many countries in Europe as well, but actually the amount of the tip is usually much smaller in Europe than it is here, and it depends on the country in Europe. I'm not so sure about South America. Yes, I think there's tipping in South America. I don't know. Yeah, Brazilian students, you have to tell me. But anyhow, um, now guys, of course, there are some words here that have been kind of highlighted in bold letters that we need to take a look at. Um, so, of course, our first one here, you guys already know this. I think this is too easy, so I'm not going to write it down on the board. It's embarrassed, right? Now, embarrassed, what's a synonym of the word Embarrassed. Of course, a good synonym is ashamed. Right? When you are embarrassed, usually you turn red, right? And of course, embarrassed is an adjective. Now, it's similar to the word ashamed. I think the difference between the two, between ashamed and embarrassed, is ashamed is a, like a deeper sense of embarrassment, right? It's like you've done something morally bad and you feel like, oh my God, why did I do that? I'm so ashamed, don't look at me, right? Uh, whereas when you're embarrassed, you know, you just kind of turn red because maybe you made yourself look kind of stupid. Maybe you didn't do something morally evil though. Anyhow, so that's embarrassed. I think you guys are okay. Now to go out for dinner. I went out for dinner with my friends, right? Um, this is a good expression. I think everybody should do this. To, or should use this. To go out for dinner dinner, right? So if you want to ask somebody to go to a restaurant with you, you would say like, hey, let's go out for dinner tomorrow night, right? Or hey, let's go out for dinner at um, that new sushi restaurant tomorrow night. Hey, did you go out for dinner last night? How was Red Robin Burgers, right? Oh, it was great. Um, going out for dinner is awesome. Unfortunately, we can't do that right now in Canada, we can't go out for dinner. Anyhow, um, yeah, very useful expression, right? But next term here, guys, we got is Bill. Bill. Now, Bill is not your neighbor, right? You know, your neighbor named Bill, he's always causing trouble for you. Um, he plays music too loudly, right? And what we're talking about here, Bill, is kind of the receipt, right? You know, when you order food in a restaurant, you have to pay for it, and we call that the bill. Sometimes you can also say the check, right? So when you ask the waitress, you say, oh, excuse me, could you please bring the bill, right? And in Canada, we kind of have a gesture for that too. We kind of go like, could you bring the, could you bring the bill? Yeah, the, the bill. Anyhow, so the bill is, of course, your receipt. It's the list of what you ordered and how much you need to pay. Nobody likes seeing the bill, right? But 
yeah, we have to pay the bill. And of course, every month you get a bill for your internet or for your cable or for your energy, right? And that is bill. But anyhow, guys, what we're going to do, we still got a lot of stuff to do here, but we're going to take a 10 minute break. And when we come back, we're going to continue onwards with this. And if we have extra time, we'll do the discussion, but this is more important. So anyhow, I'll see you guys again in 10 minutes.
Okay, welcome back guys to live PSD. Now, of course, right before the break, we were basically halfway through this reading article, Culture, My Diary in Canada. And I read over this with you guys. I hope that you guys read this at home as well. And we're just taking a look at some of that vocabulary here, right? So I explained how embarrassed is similar to ashamed. However, just keep in mind that ashamed has kind of a stronger meaning, right? If you are ashamed of yourself, you have done something pretty bad, right? Maybe you stole something from your ex-roommate, you, you ate his food, you're a piece of garbage, right? You should be ashamed of yourself. Uh, but if you're embarrassed, of course, it's similar to in shame, but it's usually for something kind of funny, like, you know, you have to give a speech and your pants fall down. You're like, oh, I'm so embarrassed. But maybe you're ashamed. Mm, I don't know. Anyhow, to go out for dinner is to go somewhere and to have dinner, right? So if you want to invite your friend to go to a restaurant, you say, hey, why don't we go out for dinner, right? Anyhow, so, and oh, and we already talked about bill. I didn't write down bill on the board because it's a pretty easy one. It's like your receipt, so what you have to pay um, every month with a list of charges and how much you must pay, right? So every month I have to pay my internet bill, my hydro, well, electricity bill, et cetera, et cetera, right? I don't like to pay, you know, bill my neighbor. He's really a terrible guy. Anyhow, um, so let's move on to the next term here. We've got a phrasal verb, to split it, right? Now, to split something is kind of like to divide something, to, to cut it in half. So if we split this board, and we have kind of done this, we would split it in half, right? So what I'm trying to do when I'm teaching this class actually is to split the board so that I only write on this side and I stay on this side, right? But if we say to somebody, hey, let's split it, what we're saying is let's like kind of divide it in half, right? And in this story here, um, they decided to split it. They decided to split the bill. So they each paid for what they ate themselves, right? But let's say my friend and I are having pizza, right? And there's one slice of pizza left, but both of us are still really, really hungry. So I say to my friend, like, hey, let's split it, right? So we cut the pizza in half, we divide it in half, and we both eat it. That's what it means to split it. Or if we say, let's split the bill, let's split it, right? I'm gonna pay this half, you pay the other half, right? And there's an interesting expression that kind of pops up when we talk about splitting a bill or paying for our own meal only, right? And we say to go Dutch. Let's go Dutch, right? Now, basically, let's go Dutch. Um, I hear a lot of students say like Dutch pay. Well, Dutch pay is not a term we use in Canada or the United States. We just say, let's go Dutch. But the meaning of that is just you pay for whatever food that you ordered and you ate, right? Um, but the origins of that expression, pretty interesting. Like, why would we say Dutch? What does Dutch mean, right? Um, of course, when we're talking about Dutch, like, you know, he or she is Dutch. Dutch is a kind of people, right? Where do Dutch people come from? Hmm, this is really, really strange. Now, Dutch people live in that country in Europe that is really, really successful, kind of a small country. Um, Dutch people are famous for, ooh, what are Dutch people famous for? They're famous for pancakes, right? Just like Canadians, except our pancakes are better because we use maple syrup, right? Uh, but Dutch people are famous for pancakes, capitalism, they're, also famous for being frugal. And I'm gonna write that term down here. Well, actually I should say thrifty. Thrifty is a nicer term. Frugals actually have some negative connotations, but, uh, but Dutch people are famous for being thrifty. Thrifty is a good adjective. If you are a thrifty person, it means you're very good at saving money and you don't like to spend money. So people who don't buy anything unless it's on sale, we say those people are thrifty. They're careful with their money, right? Now, the other term I brought up uh, before that, prior to that, 
was frugal. So thrifty is kind of similar. I'm going to write equals frugal, which is kind of true. Um, but being frugal is more extreme. It's like extreme thriftiness. If you are a frugal person, it means you really, really don't like spending money. Maybe you live in a very cheap place. You eat very cheap food, right? You're only eating bread and drinking water. I'd say, oh my God, you're a very frugal person. Um, so the difference, they're similar, but different, right? If you're a thrifty person, you're good at saving money. You're very careful with your money. If you're frugal, it's more extreme. You're extremely careful with your money. You hate spending money. Anyhow, the reason why I brought these up is because Dutch people are known for being very thrifty people. They're very well known for being careful with their money. And that's where this expression kind of comes from. A long time ago, English people from England, they thought Dutch people are too thrifty. Actually, they're kind of cheap, right? And that's why whenever English people would eat with Dutch people, the Dutch people would say like, hey, I don't want to pay for this. We have to split it, right? And that's where the expression, let's go Dutch comes from. At least I'm pretty sure. Actually, yes, that is all correct. Anyhow, guys, pretty interesting expression though. Let's go Dutch, let's split the bill. So let's take a look at our next term here. We just have A20. Okay, super easy. You guys probably know what this, what this already means. You know, you don't have to say $20, right? If you have a 20, and in this case, this person gave the server a 20, what they're talking about here is just a $20 bill, right? Oh my God, bill came up again, right? So anyhow, bill can also be used to refer to paper or plastic currency, right? $10 bill, $5 bill, $20 bill, $50 bill, $100 bill, right? Um, at least in Canada's case. Um, so a 20 is just referring to $20. And then we have loony. Okay, what is a loony? Loony is kind of a interesting word because loony has a couple, can have a couple of different meanings. But in this case, it says the guy gave the woman or the server a 20, a loony, and two quarters. So give them a $20 bill and then a loony. So a loony equals $1, right? So loony equals one dollar and it's the one dollar coin right now a loon l-o-o-n is a kind of bird and on the loony now on all canadian currency actually whether it's a bill or a coin there will always be the queen so for example on a coin the queen will be on one side and on the other side there's usually some kind of animal that has some kind of significance to Canadian culture. And on the loony, the $1 coin, there's the loon on one side and on the other side, there's the queen. So because there's a loon there, we call it the loony, right? Now, another meaning of loony though, uh, but the spelling is different. If you say to somebody, you, you are loony, it can also mean that the person is crazy, right? Or mentally unstable. Not very commonly used anymore, but anyhow. Looney equals a $1 coin. And next term we have here is quarter. Well, we all know what a quarter is, right? Quarter, of course, has or can be used in different ways. A quarter in mathematical terms is one fourth, right? So if you have a piece of, or you have a cake, right? And you say, I would like a quarter of that cake. You're saying, I want 25% of that cake, right? However, usually in Canada, when we're talking about currency and we're talking about money, a quarter is 25 cents, right? And that's the symbol for cents. It's not a dollar, it's 25 cents. Um, so of course, I'm sure if you guys are in Canada right now and you have some change, you have some coins, take a look in there. You probably have a 25 cent coin and that is a quarter, right? You got four quarters, then you got a loony. You got two loonies, then you got a toony. You got 10 toonies, then you got a 20, right? But anyhow, oh, I think I said something in my, my Google thing came up, but anyhow. Um, so next term we have here is seam. And this pops up in the sentence when he says, however, the server looked at me and she seemed angry, I don't know why, yada, 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 right? 
So he's using the word seam. Now, I'm pretty sure seam is a pretty simple term for you guys. I'm pretty sure you know what that means. Uh, but seam basically means looks like, but not just looks like. I'd say when you, when you see something or you see a person, like, of course, when you're using seam, you're basing it upon physical appearance, right? But it's not just physical appearance, it's also kind of like a feeling that you kind of get, right? Like a feeling in the air about this person or about this place. So seams is not just the same thing as looks like. No, no, no. It's looks like plus feels like, right? So a lot of, we use seams like somebody seems to be this or that quite often, right? So um, I might say to my wife, you seem angry, right? Because maybe my wife looks like this and I come home and I'm like, hey, how you doing? She's like, nah. And I'm like, oh, well, what's, what's wrong? Nah. Well, you don't want to talk to me? Nah. Right? I might say, wow, you seem angry because she looks angry, but I also get the feeling that she's kind of angry. Now, if you're in a long-term committed relationship and you're a guy, whether you're married or you've been with your girlfriend for a long time, you know what I'm talking about, right? Sometimes it seems like your girlfriend or wife is angry. Even if they don't even look like it, sometimes you can get the feeling, right? And really, you're like so confused, right? Because you don't know why. Why is she angry? There's no reason, right? Anyhow, just kidding. Um, I'm sure that happens with <laughs> boyfriends or husbands too. Anyhow, so it seems, right? Looks like plus feels like. Okay, moving on, we've got tip, right? Tip has a couple of different meanings, right? You have the tip of your finger, right? The furthest most point, right? The tip of the mountain. Well, usually we say peak, but anyhow, the tip of something. Um, but that is not so commonly used. So tip can also mean some advice, like a uh, tip can mean a small piece of advice. So there's kind of multiple meanings here. A small piece of advice. So maybe my friend is going to go to a Korean restaurant for the first time. So I say, hey, wait, before you go there, let me give you a tip. So my tip is don't eat too much kimchi or it will burn your mouth, right? Not the first time. You don't want to eat too much kimchi the first time. That's my tip, right? Or here's a good tip. Next time you're studying English, turn on a TV show and try to repeat after the characters. This will help you to expand your vocabulary and also to improve your pronunciation. So that's a that's a good tip. Sometimes we say a hot tip, right? Here's a hot tip. Every Wednesday in Vancouver at Burger King, it's Whopper Wednesday. Whoppers are 50% off. That is a hot tip, right? Anyhow, so there's that tip, but there's also a second meaning, right? And this is what it's talking about in the article here. And how does this, how was this brought up? Da, 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 da. Uh, I talked to my Canadian roommate about it. He told me that we must add a tip to the bill. So a tip is basically like extra mm, or like bonus extra payment, right? Um, so in Canada or the United States, you guys are probably aware of our tipping culture, which also exists in Europe, like I said before, but more so in Canada and the United States. So of course, when you're paying the bill, you pay for the food plus the tax, but then you should also pay a tip. And the tip is usually not included on the bill, right? So what we usually do in Canada anyhow is with our server, our waiter or waitress, we kind of see like how was their service, right? If their service was okay, or like, you know, it's all right, it's, it's totally fine. Well, these days they say you should pay a tip of 15% of your bill, right? So maybe your, I don't know, your bill came to 10 bucks, including tax, right? You're like, okay, so my, the server, they were pretty good, right? Eh, not great, but they were, they were good. 
So you're like, okay, 15%. So you leave an extra dollar and 50 cents for the server, right? But if the service was really awesome, right? Then you give them 20%. And then if the service was super, super fantastic, I, I don't know what that would be. Like the server did a somersault and, a, and they sang happy birthday to you or something. Uh, then maybe you give 25% or more. Ugh. Now, if the service was not so great, 10%. If it was really pretty bad, 5%. And if it's truly terrible, the rule is here, you don't tip, right? Because then you're showing them like, I'm not satisfied with your service, right? So a couple of times living here in Vancouver, I have actually not tipped people because the service was genuinely bad. Uh, anyhow, when I, long time ago, I lived in South Korea and when I learned in South Korea that I didn't have to tip people, um, actually this happened when I took a taxi. Um, I didn't know how to get to this place. So I got in a taxi I gave the address to the taxi driver and then he took me there and actually it was really, really close to where I was. So my bill was only about $2.50 and I felt bad, like I was wasting this guy's time. So I gave him $5, right? Because I thought, here's the $2.50 plus a tip for wasting your time. And then the old uh, taxi driver he gave me back the change and I said, no, no, I don't want it. It's a tip, you take it. But he wouldn't accept it. He, he kept, you know, pushing the money back to me, right? So, and then he kind of said in English, he said like, Korea, like no tip, no tip. I was like, oh my God, there's no tipping in Korea. And I almost started crying. I was like, oh my God, it's so beautiful. A country where there's no tipping, right? Uh, so anyhow, that's a bad joke, but no, 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 that's kind of true. Um, yeah, I know in countries like Korea and Japan, there is no tipping, but in Canada, yeah, you got to be kind of careful because that's the problem that this person had in this article is that they didn't pay a tip, the server was angry, and then they felt really bad. So when you're in Canada or the States, you do have to tip people. The standard tip here is about 15%. I know that's kind of high, like in my hometown when I was a kid growing up, we thought 10% was the standard, but somehow now it's 15%. Um, so anyhow, yeah, try to remember to pay a tip, especially if the service is good, but if the service is bad, do not pay them a tip or give them a very low tip. Okay. So anyhow, guys, that's tip. Let's take a look at upset. Okay. So where does this occur here? Dun, 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 after tip, blah, blah, blah. If you're unhappy with the service, you can leave time and no, 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 no. That's why she was upset. Okay. So if you are upset, and this is of course an adjective, you say, you know, like, I'm upset, Meh. right? Uh, if you say that you are upset, this means, you know, that you're kind of sad or you're kind of angry, right? It could be either one or both of those things, right? I'm upset. I don't want to go to school today, right? Meh. Um, so the word upset is quite often used though in Canadian and American English, right? Um, we can use this also in a different way. We can say, my stomach is upset, right? If your stomach is upset, it doesn't mean that your stomach's sad. Like, mm, I'm not getting good food these days. Um, what it means is your stomach is kind of feeling like it's in pain, right? So we often say, my stomach is upset. That's really the only body part we use it with though. However, other than that, if you say that you are upset, wait, I'm pointing at me. If you say you are upset, or somebody else is upset. That means, you know, they're kind of maybe a little bit angry or a little bit sad or disappointed, right? Because in this article here, the person whose perspective it is, they said the server was upset. That's why she was upset. She was kind of angry. She was disappointed because this guy didn't tip her, right? Anyhow, upset, really useful term. Okay, guys, next term here we have is custom, right? Now, this is an interesting word because different cultures have different customs, right? And the way it's used here is near the end of this article here, or the end of this diary entry. It says, so today I learned a new Canadian custom, right? So if we change that to customs, it has a totally different meaning like immigration and customs, right? When you enter a country, you have to go talk to customs and immigration, you know? Why are you here? What do you want to do in Canada? Huh? Um, 
So there's something like that. But when we talk about a Canadian custom, a Japanese custom, a Brazilian custom, a French custom, French custom? I don't know. Um, and different customs. What we're talking about is kind of cultural events or cultural attitudes towards something or kind of traditions, things that we do. So in Canada, it's a custom to celebrate Easter by having an Easter egg hunt. That is a Canadian custom, right? Or for dinner on Easter, we'll usually have turkey and honey ham. That is a Canadian custom, right? Or this can describe many things that we kind of do traditionally or kind of part of our manners or part of our typical behavior or courtesy, right? Um, it's customary in Canada to open the door for the people behind you, right? Um, I don't know how that came up, but, um, but whatever, right? Or it might be customary in Brazil to enjoy carnival, car carnival, car carnival, right? Carnival, when many people are enjoying dancing and drinking, I believe. Um, I could be wrong about that. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, or in Korea or Japan, let me think custom. What is a common custom? Okay, well, I know in Japan, a common custom is before you get, you know, you propose to this woman, like let's say you're a guy, you have a long-term girlfriend, so you propose to her, uh, but you need to get her parents' approval. And of course, this happens in every country, but in Japan, in order to get the approval of the parents, you might have to do something called dogeza, dogeza. Um, and you have to kind of put your head on the, you have to bow down, put your head on the floor, and then give them a little speech, right? And then your hopefully future father-in-law says, get up off the floor, you idiot, and stop talking to the floor. Um, but of course in Korea, there are also many customs. I really enjoyed a lot of traditional Korean customs when I lived in Korea. For example, if you're drinking with a group of friends, maybe one of your friends is older than you, maybe significantly older, and so you need to hide your drinking, right? So you're about to take a shot of uh, soju or Korean traditional liquor yes um you're gonna take a shot but you know you don't want this elderly person this older person to see you so you turn away and you cover it up and you drink like this right and you're like don't look at me because you feel ashamed of your drinking right anyhow guys so that is a korean custom custom is a very good one though right every culture has many different customs except for france just kidding if you're french that's a joke um anyhow last one here guys is Ah, and this is a really good term, to go broke. Because you guys know what broke means, right? Something is broken. I broke this. Don't break the computer. Oh no, the computer is broken. You broke it last night. It's not working. But this is not the same thing. To, actually, to go broke has two different meanings. But we're just going to focus on how it's used in this one here because at the very end of this diary entry, the person says, oh, I have to remember to tip people and I think I'll go broke very soon. Um, so to go broke, one meaning is basically to run out of money, right? Dun, 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 that's too bad, right? If you say, I am going broke, that means I'm running out of money. I don't have much money left. Right? If you say, I am broke, so we don't always use it with go, um, like I went broke or I am broke, the meaning of that is you have no money. And we use that quite a lot in Canada when we maybe we don't want to spend money or we really don't have a lot of money and maybe your friend asks you for money. Um, or maybe you see that in a cartoon when the character pulls his pockets out right? and there's nothing there. It means that they are broke. They have absolutely no money, right? Um, now, there is another meaning to this, though, and it, it's totally different. Um, if somebody says this in an encouraging way to you, but we have to modify it, they might say, go for, go for broke. The meaning of this is kind of completely different. It's go for go for it, or basically try hard, right? 
So you say like, oh, I'm competing in a race this weekend. And your friend says, hey, go for broke. And you're like, yeah, I'm gonna go for broke. That means you're gonna try really, 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 really hard, right? Um, although usually I don't say that. Usually I use a different expression. I say, break a leg, which, um, which also sounds really weird. But if you say to somebody, break a leg, it either means you hope that they break their leg because you hate them, or it means, you know, try really, really, really hard, right? So like, hey, I'm gonna join the race this weekend. Break a leg because I hate you. Just kidding, try really hard, right? Okay guys, so that is go broke though. So just remember though, the most common meaning is running out of money. So guys, we finished off that huge list of vocabulary there. Lots of good stuff, like honestly, a lot of this is really good. Embarrass is excellent. Go out for dinner is great. Bill, you need to know that because he's annoying. I hate Bill, my neighbor, just kidding. Bad joke, gotta stop it. Uh, split it, remember, divide in half, so also useful term. Let's split the pizza, let's split the bill, let's split the cake, let's split something. Um, a 20, well, a 20, a loony, a quarter. Um, if you're living in Canada, this is a useful term, but um, not, not so great. Um, but seem very, very useful. You should be using the term seem almost every day if you're living in an English speaking country, right? And don't just say looks like all the time. Oh, you look like you're tired. Oh, you look like uh, you're sick. You look like you're um, uh, smart or something like that. Um, try to use seem instead sometimes because it's really commonly used here. Uh, tip is a good one, if, especially if you're living in Canada or America. And just remember though, tip is not always talking about the money you pay on top of a bill. A tip can also mean a small piece of advice. So the way you use that, you say, let me give you a tip, or here's a tip, blah, blah, blah. Here's a tip, don't, don't, uh, don't make your wife angry, right? That's a hot tip, that's a good one, right? Nobody wants to make their wife angry. Okay, next one, upset, right? Again, very, very useful term. If you are upset, you are kind of sad, you're kind of angry, you're disappointed, and we also say upset stomach. Uh, which means it's kind of in pain because maybe you ate something too spicy. And then custom, also a very useful term. Every country has many different customs. And lastly, go broke. Okay, so guys, finally, let's move on to our comprehension questions here. And I need to erase the board. So I hope you guys wrote down some of that stuff. I hope you can see it. I'm just gonna erase this here, but let's take a look here. Number one, why was the writer embarrassed? Why was the writer so embarrassed here? What happened in that story that made the writer feel so embarrassed. So, of course, we remember that the writer is not a Canadian person, right? And maybe they have not lived in Canada, the United States, or some other English-speaking country before. And they had this small incident in this restaurant where the server seemed upset because they didn't do something. All right, so how would we answer this here? Why was the writer embarrassed today? Well, because they didn't do something. What did they not do? They didn't tip at the restaurant, right? Or I'm gonna change it. I'm gonna say they didn't tip the server. They didn't tip the server, so the server was upset and the writer knew that and they felt bad. So that's our answer though. They didn't tip the server. Hmm. Okay, so let's take a look at another one here. And I'm gonna switch to the other black. Okay. What is a 20, a loony, and a quarter? How much money is that? Okay, now I already explained this. So answer here is very easy. And I don't think you have to write a full sentence answer. So what is a 20? What is a one? Uh, what is one dollar? Or sorry, what is a loony? What is a quarter? So, ba ba ba. So, twenty equals a twenty dollar bill, and then a loony equals a one dollar coin, and lastly a quarter. A quarter equals twenty five cent coin. Okay. 
at least when we're talking about money. Okay, and number three, why was the server upset? Okay, well, number three is really easy, right? Because it's connected to number one. That person didn't tip the server. So why was the server upset? Well, let's say here the server bah, 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 was upset because the, now we could say the author, like the person who wrote this, but let's just say because the writer, because the writer did not tip her. Was it a her? Was it a woman? I don't know. Actually, I'm guessing it's a woman, but I might be wrong, but it doesn't really matter. So the server was upset because the writer did not tip her. Mm, didn't tip me. And, you know, a lot of people might think like, well, you know, the server, like, she doesn't have to be so upset. But if you're living in Canada or America, if you work as a server, the pay is pretty bad. Usually minimum wage. So you kind of expect to get tips because it really helps your income, right? So that's why servers really expect tips. Anyhow, uh, but like I said before, if the service is really bad, you don't have to get a good tip. Um, now, number four here says, when should you leave a tiny tip and when should you leave a big one? And it's kind of divided it or split this, split it into tiny tip and big tip. Mm. So when should you leave a tiny tip and when should you leave a big tip? Now, I'm not going to divide it up like they have on the paper here, but I'm just going to write tiny. So let's start with tiny tip first. When should we leave a tiny tip? Well, basically, if you were unhappy with the service, you should leave a tiny tip. So I'm going to write here when you are unhappy with the service. Now, sorry guys, I'm writing way over here, but I don't want to, mm, yeah. Anyhow, I'm sure you guys can see this. When you are unhappy with the service, you will leave a tiny tip. Now, if you're angry with the service, or you thought the service was really terrible, don't give them a tiny tip. Don't give them anything, right? Anyhow, next term here, guys, is big tip. Yeah, it was big tip, right? Yes. When would you leave a big tip? I would say if you really liked the service, then you should leave a big tip, right? So I'm going to write here, when you really, really liked the service. All right, that's good. Um, so yes, big tip and tiny tip. But we got to move on to our next comprehension question, number five. What do we got here? We got, why does the writer say, I think I'll go broke very soon at the end? Okay, so yeah, at the very end of this diary entry, the writer said, I think I'll go broke very soon. So he thinks he's going to run out of money soon and be living in poverty, right? Being very, very poor. So why did the writer write that? Hmm. Well, he wrote that because his Canadian roommate explained like tipping culture in Canada, right? And he thought, he probably thought, oh my God, that's very, very, very expensive, right? So that's why he wrote, I'll go broke soon is because he thinks paying or giving a tip is very expensive. So because tipping, because he thinks, actually not just he thinks, it really is. He thinks tipping is expensive. Or let me give you another word you could use besides expensive. It could also say pricey. Right? If you say something's pricey, it has the same meaning. Pricey and expensive. And I agree with this guy. Tipping can be very expensive. Um, not as much in the past, not so bad, but nowadays pretty expensive. Okay, let's take a look at number six, guys. Number six, what does split the bill mean? Okay, I think I already explained this well enough when we looked at the vocabulary and when we talked about splitting something, right? Divide it in half. So split the bill, that's what the question is. Split the bill means divide the bill in half. 
it means it means to divide the bill in half, right? So one person pays one half and another person pays the other half. Or you just pay for your own stuff, I pay for my stuff. Let's go Dutch, right? Let's go Dutch. Let's be cheap like Dutch people. Just kidding. Um, it needs to divide the bill in half. Okay, good. All right, guys. So we are done with all the comprehension questions. The only thing we have left, yeah, this was a really long reading article, is we do have some discussion questions. Now, I could race through these questions here, and then we could move on to the last thing we were supposed to do today in our elective, which was going over some discussion uh, or a discussion topic about stories. Unfortunately, I don't think it would be a really good idea to get into this. So maybe Melanie might take a look at this with you guys tomorrow. Instead, I think we'll look at the discussion questions we have here at the end, and I'll try to answer these in a bit of detail. But I would like you guys to think about these at home as well. So our first discussion question is, how often do you eat out? So think about it. Whether you're from Brazil, Japan, Vietnam, Korea, Mongolia, Bulgaria, how often do you eat out? Now, this question right now is not the best, right? So if I give you a real honest answer right now, my answer would be in the past month and a half, never, right? Because nobody is eating out right now. Uh, but before things got kind of strange because of coronavirus, how often do I eat out? Now, of course, when I eat out, it's not just myself. I'm usually eating out with my wife and child. And honestly, when you have a kid, when you have a young kid, you don't eat out too often because it's kind of a big deal. And it's, it's kind of takes a lot of effort, right? You gotta remember to bring, you know, diapers, wet wipes, and all this kind of stuff for your kid, right? So, mm, however, okay, before all this started, my wife and I would eat out two times a month, two or three times a month, not every week, but maybe once every two weeks, right? Or two, two, three times a month about, right? Uh, and usually we would just go to some place kind of close to our apartment that we really liked. Um, so usually there's a Vietnamese restaurant, uh, not too far away on Davy Street, quite good, Faux Goodness. If you're living in Vancouver, go to Faux Goodness whenever they reopen, or maybe they have takeout right now. Try it out. They have really good pho, or the, the beef noodle soup and they have really good banh mi or the Vietnamese sandwiches like nah, right or vermicelli bowls are also good uh, so we do go to a Vietnamese place or sometimes we'd like to try an Indian place on Granville Street I can't remember the name but if you like really good butter chicken or curry or naan it's really super awesome at a good price so I recommend the Indian small Indian restaurant on Granville Street that I can't remember the name of but anyhow, yeah, we eat out, or we would eat out. Now I'm saying would, because this is something that we did in the past, right? We used to do this. We don't do this anymore because of the coronavirus. Um, so that's why I'm using would. Anyhow, guys, how about you guys? Number two here, have you experienced an embarrassing moment like this while in Canada or another country? Okay, this is a good, really good question actually, right? So remember, the, the author here, the writer of this diary, um, is probably from Japan or Korea where they don't have the same customs, right? They don't have that tipping culture. And that's why he was so embarrassed when he went to that restaurant and he didn't tip the server and she got upset. So I want you guys to think at home, have you guys had a similar experience maybe here in Canada? Ha has there been a moment where you made some kind of mistake and then you felt kind of embarrassed, right? Or maybe it was not in Canada. Maybe you were in the United States and you felt embarrassed by something or you were in Europe or you were somewhere in Asia, right? 
what was that mistake? And actually, there's this really interesting term we use when we make what could be called kind of like a cultural mistake. Uh, we call this, and it's actually quite weird, we say that is a, like what this person did here is they committed a cultural faux pas. Faux pas. So a cultural faux pas basically means cultural, cultural, it's like a mis, actually that's kind of, well, cultural mistake. That sounds kind of weird though. Uh, but basically, it's a mistake due <clears throat> to cultural misunderstanding. Ugh, that is a lot, right? Um, so, a cult like I said before, this is an interesting term, cultural faux pas. A cultural mistake, because you don't really understand that culture fully, right? But actually, if you think about this term here, faux pas, right, it's not actually an English term. It's a French term uh, that we borrowed from the French because it sounds good and it kind of makes sense, a cultural faux pas, right? So have you ever committed a cultural faux pas in another country? Um, so I have to think about this myself. Have you experienced an embarrassing moment like this while you're in another country? Okay, so I've traveled a fair amount, not as much as probably many of you guys out there. Uh, but I've been to Korea, I've been to Japan, I've been to China, I've been to quite a few countries in Europe, United States, etc., etc. I'm trying to think, where did I commit a cultural faux pas? Ah, okay, okay, okay. Interesting one. Um, because I, I think this is a cultural faux pas maybe in Korea. Yes, it is, it is. In Korea and Japan, but not as serious as it is when I went to the Czech Republic. Um, so Czech Republic, some of you guys might know it better as Czecho, right? Or Czechoslovak, well, not Czechoslovakia, but the Czech Republic. So my wife and I went to Prague, or some of you guys call it Praha. Now, actually, highly recommend Czech Republic, great place, much cheaper than Western European countries. So food is cheaper. Beer is like $2 uh, for a huge pint. And their beer is the best beer I've ever had. So like great country, yeah, Czech Republic. But anyhow, um, if, you're, <laughs> if you're Canadian or American and you grow up here, you're quite used to smiling at you know, people. Like in the morning, you're walking on the street, you see an older woman, right? And you smile at her and you say, hey, good morning, right? And she says, oh, good morning. Um, but I know in some countries, you know, smiling at strangers or making a remark or saying good morning or something like that is kind of weird, right? People think you're maybe mentally handicapped or you must be crazy or something like that or maybe you're actually going to try to threaten them. So anyhow, I think in Japan and Korea, I think doing that is also seen as being weird, but maybe not terrible, but I think in the Czech Republic, um, like I approached this guy, I need to ask this guy some questions and a lot of Czech people, I found them to speak English quite well. So I, went, I was approaching this guy because I wanted to ask him for directions and I was like smiling and I know the Czech word for hello was ahoy and then at the time I, I knew how to say in Czech like I don't speak Czech but I was like ahoy I don't speak Czech and then the guy kind of looked at me and just backed off and walked away and I was like whoa what the hell. And I found out later I had committed a cultural faux pas. I felt really embarrassed because it was in the public in uh, Prague. Um, it was a cultural faux pas. Like I didn't really understand Czech culture very well. Um, yeah, they don't really smile at each other very much and they don't try to be warm with each other. They're a little bit cold in the beginning. In general, in Eastern Europe, I believe people are quite cold at the beginning of the relationship and they don't smile towards strangers. Although I think this is also kind of true in Japan and Korea. If you start smiling at people and you suddenly go up to them and start talking to them, they'll probably think you're a psycho or there's something mentally wrong with you. Anyhow, uh, so number three, guys, good question. Is there a tipping custom in your country? Um, so I don't know about you guys back in Korea or Japan. I believe the, the answer is no. I think tipping is very, very uncommon maybe only in certain situations. So it'd be interesting to know what your guys' opinion is. Um, I'm not too sure about Brazil. 
I think there is tipping culture in Brazil. I don't know if it's at the same level as it is here in Canada. Um, yeah, really not sure. I do know that tipping culture does exist in Europe, but the percent is far lower. I think if you have like an okay dinner in Europe, you just pay 5%. You don't pay what you pay here, which is usually 15. However, in countries like France or the Netherlands or whatever, um, the cost of food is much higher anyhow. So yeah, interesting question. Is there a tipping culture in your country? But you guys think about that. Let's take a look at our very, very last question here. What is good service and bad service in your opinion? Okay, so that's an interesting question because it might depend upon your culture, right? And where you are from. So I think for the average Canadian and American, good service to them is when their server will refill their drink without the customer asking. And the server will keep asking them like, how is your meal? How is it going? And like, is everything satisfactory? Are you enjoying it? In Canada and the United States, that is considered to be good service and they're smiling and they seem nice. So smiling, checking up on you, asking how the meal is, asking, you know, other questions, but also refilling your drink without you asking is considered to be good service, right? But that's Canada and America. Um, I don't know for you guys. Um, I would probably think, oh, maybe things are a little bit similar in Korea and Japan. Um, ah, okay, okay. Now for me though, on a personal level, I do like it if the server, you know, refills my drink without me asking. Of course, that's great. If the server asks me like, how is your meal? And I say, it's great. That's nice, right? But if they keep checking up on me, I actually usually find that kind of annoying, right? And that really has to do with the, the service industry and the service industry's culture in Canada. Like usually if you go to a store here, let's say you go to a clothing store, usually one of the workers will come up to you and be like, hey man, how's it going today? Can I help you with anything? Now, for me, I don't really like this very much. Well, most, most Canadian guys don't like shopping, especially shopping for clothes, right? So if somebody asks us, can I help you? It's kind of like, Ugh, right? Like, no, please leave me alone. Um, but that is still considered to be good service, right? Now, I think in countries like Oh, I know in Japan's case, for example, um, that service people have to be like extremely nice and like really, really polite and they try to be very, very helpful, right? And I think Korea is pretty, sim yeah, no, Korea is similar in that way. Um, but for some people, I know for some European people, uh, Europe has a very different, uh, very different customs when it comes to customer service. My cousin, for example, lives in Munich, Bavaria, in Germany. And he tells me that usually customer service agents in a clothing store, shoe store, whatever, they will num not come and talk to you. If you talk to them, they will help you, but they will not approach you because usually German customers find it annoying if the person comes up to them and asks them. So maybe I have like a German mentality because I also don't really like it but maybe that's just me. But in a restaurant, yeah, some questions are good. Anyhow, guys, you think about it at home. But as a quick recap to today's lesson, a lot, we looked at a lot of vocabulary and a lot of expressions. So a lot of those terms, really, really, really good. If you didn't completely catch them, try to rewatch the video if possible, but I hope you wrote them down. Try to include them in your daily conversations with whomever you're speaking with and try to include them in your writing as well. Anyhow, I know yesterday that Melanie gave you guys some homework, so good luck with that homework. Try your best and I will see you guys on Thursday. Melanie will be with you guys again tomorrow, but I'll see you guys again on Thursday. So have a good evening or good morning or afternoon or I don't know what time it is in your country, whatever, but have a good time and I'll see you on Thursday.
Thank you.